Hey friends, I just got back from the, sorry did you hear that, that was Matty burping in the background, I apologise. I just got back from my bank holiday weekend adventures, here in the UK we have a double bank holiday, so like a day off on Friday and a day off on Monday, and generally we use it to see family, so like the whole family comes together, it was a really beautiful weekend actually, like so sunny and we had a barbecue and the vibes were good but I'm feeling very tired. I have loads of siblings um, and so it's just intense. Like we're all really loud, we're all really opinionated. It's exhausting. So it's been a big weekend and I can think of nothing better to do on this rainy Monday morning than read my book and drink my coffee and do some life admin. I'm currently reading Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow and I've got my iced coffee. I try to capture some shots of the coffee making process but I'm not a very, I'm not a perfectionist when it comes to um, filming and cinematography so apologies if um, that was ugly. But yeah, I'm just going to drink my coffee, read Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow. Can I abbreviate, like, can I give this book a nickname? Because I already know that saying it multiple times throughout this video is gonna cause me some distress. <laughs> um, on that book, actually, I'm 65 pages in. We're still very much in the build-up. I think the book's like 400 pages, maybe. And I'm enjoying it. But with, uh, with like, all these types of books, um, as in the ones that are really hyped on the internet. I'm curious to see whether it'll live up to the hype. So far, I think it could. Like, it, it feels... Like we're getting to know the characters quite nicely. The writing is very digestible. Uh, I think it's really fun. I mean, as per usual with books, I knew nothing about this book before I started. I still don't really know anything about it. I like to do all my reading after I've read the book. It's kind of fun to read books without like context because you're surprised more and there's more room for just your imagination. Um, I find if I read stuff before reading a book, I become really fixated like I cannot erase it from my mind yeah I don't know it just adds this layer and I'm like I don't want that knowledge uh, so I'm enjoying it so far and I'm really liking the kind of game design video game theme I think it's really fun and I think it's a really good way to get across like we've already seen the odd moment where the author has kind of drawn lines between like game design theory um, and video games and real life. So I've, I've, I'm already really enjoying that. One thing actually, before I get into my reading, actually let me take you over here. When I went to my childhood, oh God, let's put you on the table. Um, sorry, I feel like I've just given you insight into my set design um, for my videos. So one thing that I found when I went home, it's the first time I've been back to my like childhood home since I have got back into reading. And we have quite a lot of books in our home and specifically I have a lot of books in my like childhood bedroom. And looking at all those books as someone who's like now got back into reading, I was hit with this intense wave of just gratitude for how um, like the access I had to so many really good books growing up. It was an intense time, like it was very nostalgic. Uh, so yeah, that was pretty lovely. And I ended up doing a bit of a book swap, like I'm currently renting in London, which is not the best space situation. So I don't have that much space for books. So I brought some books from here and like swapped them with books at home. And I just wanna show you 
the three books that I found. I had no real concept of like what books I had at home, so I kind of had a peruse and I treated it like my own private library. It felt very luxurious. I ended up going for classics, like a lot of what we have. My mum was really into reading. So we have a lot of her kind of book club books, um, but then we also have loads of classics because that's just the way it is. Yeah. These are the three books that I brought back. Um, as you can see, very kind of thick and serious looking. First we have The Grapes of Wrath by Steinbeck. I brought this one back because after I read East of Eden, I mentioned it to my dad and he will not stop talking about The Grapes of Wrath. I'm not really sure, like I don't have the same book taste as my father, um, or at least not really, really similar. Like he's very, you know, he's like, older man book taste. Um, so I'm not there yet, like there isn't loads of overlap, maybe one day. And he's kind of obsessed with, he's like a little bit too obsessed with misery. So, and this book is apparently full of misery. So I'm intrigued as to how I'll find that. The next book that I have is Wild Swans by Young Chang. There isn't a cover because the cover came off at some point in its long, long life. Um, it's quite like an old, old one. So this I actually might put on my like book club reading list. For those of you who saw a recent video of mine, I am starting a book club. Thank you by the way for all of your kind comments. I'm really looking forward to starting. I feel, I feel like I just like filmed the video announcing it and like felt so compelled to just put it out there and I just really didn't know what to expect. So it's really exciting um, to see that a lot of you want to read. Uh, for context, the book club is called Big Scary Book Club and we're going to read books that have just been on the to-do list, to-do list, TBR, for a very long time because they're intimidating. So they might be classics, but they also might not be. They might just be long books or maybe the subject matter is hard. So for example, the first one we're going to be talking about is East of Eden and then we're going to be talking about A Little Life and then we're going to be doing Crime and Punishment. Um, and I'm thinking of adding this book to the list. Uh, so it's actually banned in China. It's a memoir, um, which is another reason why I'm quite excited to read it because I don't read memoirs loads. I'm like not great at history and apparently the author kindly um, writes in a way that gives you loads of like a bit of a history lesson um, as well as a memoir. Um, and she's like very helpful to those who like are ignorant to the history. Anyway, so as I said, it is a memoir and it's about three generations of Chinese women. Um, I think on the inside. No. Oh, wow. Oh, this is actually really, it's got a note. I actually didn't notice this. So I was like quite emotional. It's like written, so a friend of my parents gave this book to them and it's got a little note in the back and it like jokes that um, my brother, who would have been one at the time, will enjoy the book now. It's like lots of love. Oh. See, I knew getting books from, from home would be a, an emotional experience. I didn't think it would be this emotional. The nostalgia is quite a lot right now. What was I saying? Yeah, so this is a book about three generations of Chinese women. The reason this book is banned in mainland China and still is, is I believe it's very critical of Mao. As I was saying, I don't read loads about books before I read them, but I think in this case, I am actually gonna do a bit of reading before it because it just feels right for like this type of book um, to have more, a little bit more of an understanding of its context, just to do its service, but also to get even more enjoyment out of it. I feel like having the context is gonna be really valuable. Okay, I'm really excited for this one. That was a really cute note. Finally, the third book is Crime and Punishment, which as I mentioned, I plan on reading as part of my big, big scary book club video. So it's a classic and it's Russian and I've never read Russian books. So that's kind of why I put it on the big scary book club list. I've been meaning to read it for ages and it's just so intimidating, like even the title isn't that the most intimidating title ever? But I also found out uh, through a comment 
from a book club, a booktube friend, that in Russian literature everyone has loads of different names and that's a part of what can make it quite complicated because there are loads of characters and there are loads of different names. So that's a very useful thing to know uh, before reading this book. But yeah, excited for my own personal library and my trip down memory lane. Anyway, I'm gonna read tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. I'm gonna do a bit of life admin and drink my coffee. Mm -hmm.